to tušit. Hey. Um, hello, uh, I'm Savian Talmat from IOActive. So I'll be saying it again in Spanish, just to practice some Spanish a little bit. So uh, it will be a simple agenda. I'll be having one slide in Spanish, as agreed. And then the rest of the slide will be in English, and we close with a Spanish one. So just <laughs> be nice with my Spanish. OK, so it uh, should be like this. Mi nombre es Sofian Talmati, trabajo para IOActive. Uh, yo estoy uh, muy contento de estar en Ecopart. Gracias. So, uh, I just learned those two yesterday. So, that's a good thing. This is the, I mean, the hardest part in the talk. So, just. Okay, so uh, why talking about system updates? Uh, actually, this was supposed to be a long, long talk. It's now in a turbo talk, so I will not go too much into details and uh, uh, examples, but we will, see, we will see some of them. We will talk about real life scenarios. Uh, system updates uh, is an interesting point to look at uh, within any pen test or something like that, because why? Uh, Generally, those uh, processes are running in high uh, privileges uh, context. Uh, and then, uh, like antiviruses or any OS updates or something like this, just, just you can run them as a simple user. So uh, here we can see that there should be a link between the user, what is the user running, and the, the, the services or something that is with higher privilege. So it's this, this talk, we're just talking about some of the points that could be interesting whenever you are facing those system updates, what to look for, and try to exploit those, those points to get uh, any privilege escalation, actually. Uh, the first point uh, we'll be talking about is uh, race conditions. So actually, there still exists a lot of race conditions into system updates. I mean, uh, uh, so because generally those uh, those uh, processes are just downloading something from the internet and then running or applying those patches or updates on the system. Uh, so between 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 the time where this uh, update is downloaded and then executed or applied, there's a time frame. So if some if if, if the process is not uh, really well secured, we can just uh, try to attack this point and uh, alter or change any files or something like this to get, to get any privilege escalation. Uh, one of the CVs is uh, uh, the Lenovo one, where there was, um, uh, I think, a lot of people heard about it. Uh, it's, uh, there's a race condition within the update, wherever you are trying to run the update, this update will just uh, go grab a binary from internet, from Lenovo website actually, and then just, uh, uh, since you are running it from a uh, user uh, privilege, simple user privilege, uh, one you download it, this user privilege will just talk to a system, uh, to a process running under system privilege and ask him to run this binary uh, as administrator. So if we can just modify or change that file between those two moments, we can make it execute uh, our binary instead of the legitimate one. So uh, the main reason why this happened uh, is that uh, the file that is downloaded is downloaded within uh, a word writable folder. This is uh, actually a design problem because it's the user process that is downloading the file. So since you are the user that is downloading the file, you have to store it somewhere. So the destination folder will be uh, controlled by the user. Uh, a better solution will be maybe to call the high-level process to do the download and store it in a, I mean, in a safe manner. Uh, we can have a small demo. I'm just hope that everything will work well. So here we are. You can see the machine. So uh, actually, this is uh, the problem came also from this folder. This is the folder where the update is downloaded and then executed. And this folder is, uh, you know, is word writable because you are the user that is downloading that update. 
So if we can go uh, do something just simple, can go to program, Lenovo, and just run the system update. Sorry for Lenovo, just, yeah, unlucky year for them, so. Uh, here we are. So if we click, for example, just the next, it's searching for agent update. Come on. You have bad internet. Okay, your copy of system updates need to be updated. So before clicking on OK, I can go just there, check the new client, and I see this is the binary that was downloaded. So uh, as easy as this, I just take my binary, copy, paste, copy and replace. I will say OK. They are so nice. Just. And here we are. So this is my binary that is just running a, I mean, a command line with administrator account. So, thank you. So, uh, sometimes, you know, uh, when there's a recent condition, you need to run, etc. But here, you know, the, the OK box saved our, our life and our time. But it's nice. So, his administrator, no. I, I am user, simple user privilege. I don't have any privilege. So I'm just running it as a user. And then uh, what happens is that once it's downloaded, this user process just connects to a pipe to the a system service and ask him, OK, oh, please, can you run this binary as administrator? And that's it. So as easy as this. OK. Yeah, I mean, uh, oh, come on. Uh, OK, that button, this one. OK, we pass the demo. There is condition. So what we look for when we are in this kind of you know, assessment or something like this, uh, it's interesting to check any file operations, any file creations, any deletion, any opening of file, uh, uh, any downloaded file or something like this to see if we can, uh, I mean, first to see if those files are interesting for us if they contain any sensitive information or something like this that we can exploit, and then try to work out and see if we can alter those files between do two, I mean, two time slots that can help us to take advantage from this. I mean, this is the main concept of a array's condition. So, uh, and secure enter process communication. So, uh, by, I mean, what someone can think, the first thing is that in order to run an update from a simple user and make it execute some things as administrator or system privilege or something like that. There should be a way of communication by those, between those. Uh, and sometimes if this communication between the process uh, is not really secured, we can take advantage about it. So from it. So same example from, you know, from the Lenovo we had like different uh, vulnerabilities that were listed. One of them is uh, insecure communication between the, uh, the processes, is that when you run the update, you know, you remember the point where it says OK, when I click the OK. So that's the point when I click the OK, what happens is that my main process will just connect to an IMIT pipe and ask him, OK, now run this binary as administrator. So uh, the nice thing is that in that version, uh, in order to, uh, to validate the caller, uh, the name, the, the service that is listening in an MA pipe, what does he do? Is just check in for a hard-coded key. There's, uh, there's uh, something like uh, called secret code. This secret code is said, uh, is passed as an argument. It's passed an argument between the client to the name pipe. So what the client do, we can see that a demo. Actually, it will not work this time. It didn't work for me because they crashed my machine when they changed this. So. However, we can see the code. So this is a, a first uh, proof of concept. This is actually the first proof of concept that was uh, written. Uh, it was written by uh, a colleague, Michael Milvig. He's uh, a principal consultant at IOActive. So when the, f the bug was found, he wrote a nice, a nice proof of concept. 
So if you look, this is just a, a simple PowerShell command that accept the commands that to be run, the arguments, the folder, etc. System is to say run it as system or as administrator. So the command line is slash execute my command. The arguments are my arguments, so I can send execute any, any any command with any arguments. The folder is where the execution is done. And then there is something that I pass here, it's called security code. So if I send this bunch of this big line to this named pipe that is down, this one is called Sue pipe server. This is a this is a, a service of Lenovo listening to this named pipe. So if I send the, him this big command and telling him, okay, execute uh, slash cmd uh, create a user or something like this, and then slash security code equal this one. So this service will trust me and say, oh, this is legit because he sent me the security code that is not so secure actually. So. That's the problem. So it's just a simple PowerShell command that connect to the name it pipe and tell him, okay, execute that command, and this is this is the secret key. So I am legitimate. So by this, uh, it's easy to just run something as system. So uh, it's not it's not only name it pipes. You can check RPC. You can check some mile slots, or uh, sometimes there's some uh, socket. You know. TCP IP socket is listening to a port, just waiting for uh, someone to ask him to do something. Uh, the thing is that if uh, the validation process is not really uh, strong and doing well, so you can bypass this and fool the service. So he will trust you as a legitimate uh, binary. OK. Use uh, of a relative path. This is uh, interesting too. I, I mean, I'm, I used to try this generally in many, uh, many uh, assessment pen tests and something, and it works actually sometimes. What? Okay, can you hear me? Okay. What happens is that uh, generally when you are just in a lockdown environment or just having user privileges or something like this, uh, you have not access to the folder of the application under program files or something like this. So you cannot write, you cannot alter files there, you cannot uh, uh, change files, you cannot, so they will stay uh, as they are. What you can do, uh, simple thing, that uh, I first, this is one of the first that I do, is just copy that folder into a desktop. And from there I can change, alter the binaries, alter the configuration files, or do whatever I want. Uh, the, the interesting thing is that sometimes those execution just load the DLLs or just load the configuration file from a relative path. Means they will load the ones that you change it, and not the original one that are in the program files or something like this. So that's one of the, a common problem that you can you can find, and you can use it, for example, to hijack some DLLs. Just load your own DLL instead of the application one or something like this. What to look for? Generally, is looking. Uh, my French is going out. <laughs> okay. Generally, we look for file dependencies. Uh, I mean, which file is depending on which file? Which file is loading which file? Uh, w where are we loading those configuration files? Uh, Sometimes also we can find uh, that the binary goes grab some paths from uh, registry for Windows registry, and from there, sometimes they are not well protected from. Uh, you know, so you can, as a simple user, just uh, alter something or low privilege or something like this and ch change that and, you know, fool the system to do something else that what it was meant to do. Uh, digital signature. So uh, one of uh, uh, the reasons why the first example of race condition worked uh, is that there's a, a weak digital signatures validation. So the thing is that uh, the UTS.exe that is downloaded uh, is checked if it's digitally signed by Lenovo. But the, the check is, is weak. What they do is th that they just check the subject of the certificate. If it's Lenovo, blah, 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 blah. So that's it. So what you can do is just, you know, 
create your self-certificate, self-sign the binary, just get the nice subject inside and say, okay, I'm legit. And that works. Actually, that worked. So those are bad stuff, but they still exist. Thanks for that. Yeah, that's it. What does it just download the file, validate the signature, and then run it as administrator. If there is a weak validation there, uh, I mean, you can just do whatever you want. Uh, 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 okay, what we look, we check generally the binaries or the file, see the digital signatures, see what, uh, uh, I mean, if there is some weak validation or something like this. Uh, and secure communication, this is pretty interesting. Uh, I will not go too much into this detail against you all know the evil grade. Yeah, so his name is Amato, right? Mr. Amato, Senor Amato. So, uh, this uh, is a usual attack, you know, just playing with network, uh, men in the middle, uh, fooling the, the, you know, the, the process and something like this, where there are many examples, you can just go check Evil Grade and see uh, it's actually a framework with um, uh, plenty of exploit in this way, uh, that exploit many, 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 many version of uh, different softwares that uh, uh, are actually vulnerable to this. So generally what we look is just checking if there are any clear text protocol, if it's downloading from HTTP, uh, you can uh, do some DNS uh, attacks, you can just do some traffic captures and see how things they are. So if you are able just to attack this from a network point of view, you can just alter those files where being downloaded and send any data you have. And through that way, when, you are when, when the data is downloaded, it will be maybe trusted, I don't know, so. Uh, another another uh, thing is uh, uh, I play too much, a lot also with uh, unpacking some cabinet files, some zip files, etc. Uh, sometimes the process uh, of unpacking those files is uh, a little bit uh, unsafe. Uh, I've run for lately, I guess, with uh, one example, where it was uh, a mobile application, when the users, uh, when the, I mean, the updates, when you do an update, it's downloading that uh, zip file into downloads folders. We come back at the first point where uh, it's downloading it in a word writable folder. So since they are there, between the time the signature is checked and the time it's unpacked, you can just go inside in the middle and change that zip file. If you are able to, when, when, when it was able to change that zip file, I mean, you can just do a lot of things, you know. Uh, you can just uh, use uh, uh, any path traversal, you know, any malicious uh, uh, zip file. You can just go right uh, outside of the, uh, I mean, the main folder for the installation, change file system. You can do some denial of, denial of service attack, etc. cetera. Uh, Unattended installation, so uh, uh, it's usually it could happen and it happened to me actually when uh, just uh, uh, auditing the system you can just use some grab or find, it's find on Windows, right? Yeah, it's find on Windows. And you can just look for some log files or text files and uh, it happens where you can find some uh, nice credentials. Nice credentials. You can find some uh, some uh, certificates and some sensitive data, the data. So when the system update is done, sometimes I mean you miss they miss some some information inside that you can use. They leak actually. And the last slide in Spanish also. So muchas gracias. The second word I don't know how to pronounce. It. Any questions? So thank you. That was fast. No questions, please. <laughs> Not in Spanish, at least. ¿Alguna pregunta por allá? No? Bueno, un aplauso fuerte. Thank you. Thank you.